curve sketching a rational function. Our first um, example, we'll look at the reciprocal of a quadratic. In this example, we'll look at 1 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. And we'll call that f. And if f of x equals 0, then it can cross the x-axis. And if it could, it could only happen if the numerator is equal to 0. And as you can see here, clearly the numerator is 1, and you can never make 1 equal to 0. So this is impossible. And therefore, f of x cannot equal 0. f of x cannot cross the x-axis. And so a horizontal asymptote exists on the x-axis where y equals 0. To find the vertical asymptotes, go through the following steps. Well, to do that, we can take the quadratic in isolation. Here's the f of x once more, and we're just going to look at the denominator, x squared plus 5x plus 6. We can factor it to give us the factors x plus 2 and x plus 3, and we discover that this quadratic has zeros at negative 2 and negative 3, uh, which means that that is where the denominator will be 0, and we'll end up with 1 over 0 when x equals negative 2 or x equals negative 3. The, and that means that if we get 1 over 0, this will be the location of the vertical asymptotes of f of x. Finding the zeros is just a matter of looking at the factors negative 2 and negative 3. The vertex of the quadratic will be the local extrema of the reciprocal in the middle region. A local extrema or local extreme or extremum, since there's only one of these examples, is a point where either a local maximum or a local minimum exists. And this is where a point on the graph has y coordinates, has a y coordinate that is either greater or lesser than its neighboring points. And if the extremum has a y value that is greater than the y values of its neighboring points, then it is a local maximum. If the extremum has a y value that is lesser than its neighbors, then it's a local minimum. Here are two examples with the quadratics they came from superimposed. Here we have one with uh, a quadratic which would have a positive lead term and so the quadratic is concave up but when we take the reciprocal of that quadratic we get this rather strange shape of a graph and notice there's an asymptote here and an asymptote here. Now mind you nobody's saying that this is actually the f of x that we want to plot. Uh, this is just some random example I pulled from the from the internet just to show you what uh, these graphs can look like and the graphs we're trying to plot look something like what we have here in green where we have kind of two L-shaped uh, sections and a and a inverted U-shaped section like this but that only happens if we have a positive fraction. If we have a negative fraction or if we have the reciprocal of a quadratic with a negative lead term well, for, first of all, the quadratic with the negative lead term is, as one would predict, concave down. Um, but when we take the reciprocal, we seem to get this uh, familiar shape, but it's upside down compared to this one. So uh, you can either have you know, this situation with the positive fraction or this situation with the negative fraction. Or if you like to go from the original quadratic, the positive lead term, negative lead term. You might notice in these examples of inverse quadratics that the vertex of the parabola, both of them shown in red, and the local extreme of the reciprocal are not in the same place. The reciprocal function here being in green and this one being in blue. But clearly the vertex is not in the same place as this local extrema. However, strangely enough, it would appear as though the x coordinates seem to be the same. The y values though are very very different. So that's something to go on. So if we look at the positive and negative um, uh, graphs again and here is just some you know here you have your vertex which is some point x y well I think one can reason that the local extreme that we're looking for must be of the form x 1 over y. Okay, And so if we look here we have x 1 over y here and x y from the original parabola when the coefficient is negative. The x values look the same but the y values can be quite different as we just said. 
This is because in the parabola a y value a y valued vertex should result in a one over y valued coordinate in the local extreme of the reciprocal. Remember, these are just examples of graphs we want to sketch, but you know, such as they are, they do convey the general idea. So the local extreme or local max of f of x coincides with the vertex of this quadratic x squared plus 5x plus 6. To see this, you first need to complete the square. Here we go. Here we complete the square. If we just take x squared plus 5x, well, we need, we need to take half of the middle and square it. So half of 5 is 2 and a half. 2 and a half squared would be the constant term of the perfect square that we're trying to make. But in order to add 2 and a half all squared, we have to take away 2 and a half all squared and keep the 6 that was in the original expression. And so we work out x squared plus 2 and a half quantity squared minus what does 2.5 work out to? It works out to 6.25, so minus 6.25 plus 6. And when we add those, we are, we're only left with point, negative 0.25. So here, the vertex is negative, point, uh, negative 2.5, negative a quarter. And this point, of course, is way off. It's way off compared to f of x. So because f of x is the reciprocal of the quadratic, we actually take the reciprocal of a quarter. And so what we end up with is the point negative 2 and a half, negative 4 for the quadratic we're interested in, or for the reciprocal of the quadratic we're interested in. And uh, right now, I'm leaving it open, whether it's a local max or a min. We haven't really plotted the graph yet, but we've defined what a local max is or a local min is, and why don't we find it that way. So time for a sanity check. Let's plug the x value into f of x. All we did was plug the x value into uh, a completed uh, square, but why not? why not do a sanity check here by plugging it directly into f of x. So we plug in our 2.5 in there. We know that the answer is negative 1 over 4, and it turns out, lo and behold, we do get negative 4. And so uh, at least it shows that it's a point on the graph and we all are also saying that it's a local extreme. But is it max or min? Now I know that if you took the calculus course this would be a very easy question to answer but without calculus is there a way to find this? And the answer is yes. So we can reason that in between the two vertical asymptotes at x equals minus 2 and x equals minus 3, the region must be continuous around A, no other breaks in the function. This means that on both sides of A, y values must be greater or less on both sides, and so we only need to pick one x value on each side of A and try it out. Okay, so as it happens, if we take we know that the x value we're interested in is negative 2.5. So if we take negative 2.6 and we plug it into our formula, we get negative 4.16 repeating. This bar over the 6 means repeating. So f of negative 2.6 is equal to negative 4.16 repeating. And f of negative 2.4, strangely enough, is the same answer. But it just means that it's symmetrical on both sides, and both, and both of these values are more negative, or as it happens, less than f of negative 2.5 itself, which as we just said was minus 4. So because these values are less and the negative 4 is greater, we say that the point negative 2.5, negative 4 is a local maximum. So now we can find the behavior near the vertical asymptotes. Now this is done using limits. There are two asymptotes, one at x equals minus 3 and one at x equals minus 2. So we plug some value close to 3 but approaching negative, sorry, close to negative 3 but approaching negative 3 from the left, meaning that we need a number that's a little more negative than negative 3. So I choose negative 3.001. It's important that I choose a number close to 3. So this is why I'm choosing uh, such a strange number because it's very, very near to 3. And so in place of x, I, I substitute negative 3.001 
work that out. I get the number 999 with some decimals after it, but it, it rounds out pretty well to 999. And I think we can conclude that as x approaches minus 3 from the left, y approaches positive infinity, because 999 is a big, kind of a big number, and I think we can be satisfied that it's well on its way to positive infinity. Now, what about approaching negative 3 from the right? That means we have to substitute in a number that's ever so slightly less negative than negative 3. So we'll choose negative 2.999. And when we do that, we get negative 1,001. Well, that looks like it's on its way to minus infinity. So as x approaches three from, negative 3 from the right, y approaches minus infinity. And what about the other asymptote? the one at x equals minus 2. Well, to approach negative 2 from the left, we need a number a little more negative than 2, so we'll use negative 2.001. Strangely enough, we get the same answer as just the last calculation. We get negative 1001. Remember, there's some, some decimals after this, but it certainly rounds to this uh, quite nicely. And so as x approaches negative 2 from the left, y approaches negative infinity. And we find that it approaches positive infinity as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So, um, so now, what about the limit as x gets very large or going to infinity? Well, you need to test both x, equals inf x approaching infinity and x approaching negative infinity. So the limit as x approaches infinity we just sub in a very big number, you know. Uh, I should have said f of x here. But this is f of 10,000. I, I don't know why I said g. But when we sub in g of 10,000, we get a number very, very close to zero because look how big the number is in the denominator. It's almost zero. But we know that you can see from the fraction that whatever this fraction is, it's a positive number. So it's approaching zero from above. And the limit as x approaches minus infinity, once again, sub in a minus, say, 10,000. And we end up with a very big number in the denominator, which makes the function almost equal to zero. And notice there are no minus signs here. So this is a positive number, and it's also approaching from above. So as, either, as x either gets very large and positive or very large and negative, the function approaches 0 but remains positive. So remember that y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. And so now we will use the information that we garnered from here and from the last slide uh, over here and we'll actually sketch the graph. So over here we've drawn a graph with the asymptotes at minus 2 and minus 3. So we have two vertical asymptotes at minus 2 and minus 3. We also said earlier that there was a horizontal asymptote exactly on the x-axis. And um, maybe it's in order to draw a couple of points first uh, because we did come up first with some key points. One of them was the point negative 2.5, negative 4, which was one of the one of the um, things that we came up with in an earlier slide. So we said it was a local maximum. So negative 2.5, negative 4 was over here. And now let's deal with the limits uh, at uh, at the respective places. So uh, the first one is the limit as x approaches minus 3 from the left. And as we said earlier, that it was going to go to positive infinity. So that's what we can draw in. Now, the other part was um, to just complete this graph, because there really are no other important points on this graph. We can talk about what happens as x goes towards negative infinity. And we found that not only was x was the function approaching 0, but it was approaching 0 from above. Now, as for approaching minus 3 from the right, going this way, we said 
Well, while it, approaching 3 from the left caused the function to go to positive infinity, approaching 3 from the right caused it to go to minus infinity. So we draw this in and we join that maximum. And now approaching minus 2 from the right, we're going this way, so then we're actually, uh, we actually found that approaching minus 2 from the, sorry, from the left, actually caused the function to go to minus infinity also. Now, there's a couple of other things. Uh, we, we need to cover what happens as we approach minus 2 from the right and what happens as the function, as x approaches uh, positive infinity. But first, what about, uh, one thing we didn't talk about is what happens when the function approaches 0. Well, for this function, if we plug in 0 here, that'll cause that to go to 0, plus 5 times 0, so that's 0 plus 0, plus 6, right, which is 6. So this fraction, when f, when x is equal to 0, f of x will be equal to 1 over 6. So i got to plug in something that's approximately 1 over 6, which is something like that, because notice this is a half, so 1 over 6 is less than a quarter. And um, now, Let's remember what uh, the rest of our problem was approaching negative 2 from the right was going to positive infinity. So we do it that way and now we try to connect that dot and then show that as we go to positive, as x goes to positive infinity the function stays positive but it approaches 0. Gets closer and closer to 0 without ever touching 0. And this is, this is the function f of x, which, if you recall, was 1 over x squared plus 5x plus 6.